Dr. Greg Ellis has been talking about the revolution in nutritional science that's occurring today. We're moving away from the cholesterol era into the glycation era. Now, very few people know anything about glycation, and they know a lot about cholesterol. They worry about it. Their doctors worry about it, and they get the cholesterol measured, and they have no idea that the actual culprit is glycation. So we're moving into a new world. We've got to open this whole thing up. And it is actually the carbohydrates and not the fat and cholesterol that caused our problems. Now, what I've argued in a series of videos that we do know the cause of most age-related diseases, the degenerative, degenerative diseases of our time, atherosclerosis, cancer, the neurodegenerative diseases, cardiac problems, renal problems, eye problems, all the degenerative diseases that are striking at us as we age. Now our doctors often tell us that we don't know the cause of these diseases, but I'm arguing that we do. The primary culprit is glycation. Tightly associated with glycation, because they're all involved, is insulin. That's the insulin theory of aging. And we also have the mitochondrial theory of aging. Now, the mitochondria are powerhouses that produce all the energy in every cell of our body. Without them, we're in trouble. So they've got to be made whole, kept whole, kept alive, and cleaned up. And the cell has processes within it to be able to do that and keep the mitochondria in optimal order. And then there's ways to optimize that thing even further through the use of nutritional supplements and the appropriate exercise and diet. Now, glycation, as I've stated, is supposedly irreversible. I don't believe that's true any longer. I think it is reversible and it's preventable. We can prevent it by an aggressive program of diet and use of supplements, and we can even begin to reverse it because these mitochondria are the primary targets of glycation, along with the skin and other areas that are made of proteins because the glucose from the carbohydrate binds to the proteins that make us up. And these are the specific targets for the glycation process. Well, the mitochondria only live about 20 to 50 days, and then they're degraded and replaced. If they are strongly damaged during that period of time, they're completely degraded, turned into their constituent parts, and those parts and amino acids and things are used to reconstruct new ones. Now, <clears throat> there could be a lot of argument about my position that we do know the cause of these diseases because, in fact, I've queried a few people since I made the statement the other day if they believe that doctors tell us that they do know the cause of disease. And other than the simplistic things like cholesterol, know what your cholesterol is, watch your salt because of the high blood pressure, they argue that we don't know the cause of cancer and, and these other diseases that we get when we age. And I dispute that. So I wondered to myself, is there something, is there something we can lay our hands on? Because what the current establishment wants to do, they want to hold on to the theories that they currently have. They don't want to change. That's critical to the individual and to the institutions that deal with these, these ideas. They don't want to deal with new theories. They don't want to find out anything new. They want to keep digging more deeply into what they already believe and what they already know. This has been pointed out by Thomas Kuhn in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, where these institutions have been defined by Kuhn. They know exactly how they're going to behave. So what if there is, in nutrition or in science, something that is universally known and accepted. may not be fully known by most people because they may not be doing research in this area, but universally accepted as an actual fact that cannot be disputed. And then if that will serve as some sort of basis for understanding how the changes that occur with that will affect it, we can define appropriate procedures for what we eat and what we do. Well, it turns out there is. It's called calorie restriction. It's universally known that calorie restriction is the most potent anti-aging therapy that one can use. 
Now, we also know that there has to be a significant reduction in calories of about 30 to 40 percent over what you would normally eat on your own to get the effect offered up by calorie restriction. And we also know that humans won't do that. And there are ways to get around that. There's ways to get around the lack of the ability to do this so we can get the benefits of calorie restriction. So what do we know about calorie restriction? Why does it seem to work? Well, it seems to work primarily because it reduces our exposure to insulin and to glucose. So insulin, of course, is produced in response to the appearance of glucose in our body. And the glucose, of course, is one of the key operators in the glycation process and then leading to the destruction of the mitochondria. So that's the big deal. Reduction in the exposure to insulin and glucose. So that brings us next to the next interesting point. Well, what's one of the best ways to do that? Follow a carbohydrate restricted diet. You won't be getting much carb, you won't be getting much glucose, therefore you won't get much insulin. And we know that a low carb diet will for the most part, have the amount of insulin that you're exposed to during the course of the day. And that's one of the key strategies you want to follow if you're going to buy into and apply the insulin theory of aging and disease. You want to have that insulin that we would normally be exposed to. Now, that being said, we've got to consider what else will work. What else can we do to stay away from the insulin Besides the carbs, there are nutritional supplements we can use. We want to try to burn more fat as a source of fuel, which will slow the amount of carbohydrate going through what we call the glycolytic pathway. That's the pathway in which the glucose is broken down to smaller and smaller components so it can be used as a source of fuel. We want to minimize the use of glucose as a source of fuel. So now that we can say this, that calorie restriction is universally accepted, anyone who denies the fact that calorie restriction is the most powerful anti-aging strategy we can use is just kidding themselves. And they paint themselves a fool just by making a statement. Now, I don't know how the arguments are going to unfold of those trying to defend their current position against the position that I'm now taking pointing out the cause of these diseases. But there will be angst, there will be name-calling. I expect it to happen. But pointing out this universally known and accepted idea minimizes it because what can they say? They can't say that glucose and insulin are not involved in the aging process because they are and it's been proven via the mechanism of calorie restriction. So calorie restriction really gives us a level playing field. And from that, we can look at our diet and we can know, for example, that the United States Department of Agriculture dietary recommendations will do us no good. They're too high in carbohydrate. They're going to drive us into a disease state, into diseases of aging. Nothing else is even possible. So when are these expert committees and these groups going to get their head out of the sand and look at the real facts and the real information and piece together a story that's based on facts and not based on maintaining the status quo. That's the big question and I'm going to be very interested in following that as time goes by and I begin to get more traction with these comments and enlightening areas. So that puts together this series of four videos on disease, diseases of aging, and the underlying causes. And I think we've got a real handle on it, and we've got steps that we can take to protect ourselves and protect our health and to live longer while being truly healthier. But it's going to mean not following the healthy recommended diet that the establishment offers up. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.